Sup guys, he King here, bringing you another Resident Evil related video. So, cheers. Okay. So, now that I've played the game and finished it, it's time to sit down and basically talk about potential theories on where Resident Evil 9 is going to go. As you all are aware, there was a production leak, I keep mentioning this because uh, I have to. We know that Resident Evil Outrage is coming out, uh, followed by Resident Evil Remake, and, uh, sorry, Resident Evil 4 Remake. And then we have, uh, apparently, a Resident Evil game called Apocalypse, coming out in 20, well, it was scheduled for 23, but most likely it's going to be 24, because Resident Evil 4 Remake is now potentially coming out in 23. And the rumors are going around that Apocalypse is going to be Resident Evil 9, so Resident Evil 9 is in development. And if we are to believe what Dusk Gollum has to say, and he says the following, uh, while he's tweeted that RE7, 8, Village, and 9 are part of a trilogy. Most interconnected titles in the franchise, planned to be developed close one to another, elements introduced in RE7 will make more, much more sense after RE8. After RE9, Capcom wants to abandon the numbered titles to make more self-contained stories and avoid planning out stories ahead of time. Okay, so first of all, yeah, it kind of, it kind of makes sense. You look at Resident Evil 7, it was basically a semi-reboot for the franchise. A lot of big things sort of came to an end with Resident Evil 6 and Resident Evil Vendetta sort of like closing off certain elements. Uh, but also, yeah, there were setups, there were setups. But it became sort of a very overcomplicated mess. So, you know, the series had to restructure itself and RE7 was it. And RE8, Village, uh, as we know, uh, went into development six months before RE7 even came out. And as we've seen and played now, it was a full-fledged sequel to everything set up in RE7. Ethan came back, Mia came back, Chris came back, uh, and the mold came back, and we found out the origins of the mold. We got a bit more little hints about the organization, uh, aka the connections, and what their connection to the um, situation in RE8 was, and how all the elements or situation in RE7 came about from the situation in RE8, etc, etc. And of course, RE8 ends in a way that obviously is setting up RE9. And it makes a lot of sense for it to be very interconnected. I mean, and as, as he says, it's the most interconnected titles in the franchise. And yeah, it, it is. Because you look at you look at RE1 to RE2 and it's not very connected at all. You're playing new different characters with the bare connection in those games. Basically, you know, for Leon's campaign essentially being Ada because she was mentioned in RE1 and Claire because she's Chris's sister, and that's really about it. None of the, all the other characters, or the surviving characters are mentioned in the files. Ori 3 brings back Jill, and Brad is killed off in the very beginning parts of the game, and Barry is only a cameo, and that's if you end up going in a certain direction to even unlock that ending with him. And yeah, again, not very big up there. The environment is obviously the big connection there, Raccoon Forest to Raccoon City, and then Raccoon City's destruction. But in terms of a story character sort of way, it really isn't. And then of course, Cold Veronica was a straight up proper sequel to the series, but it's not really regarded as part of the original trilogy. If anything, it's sort of like the epilogue to that trilogy, the same way that RE0 is basically a prologue to that series. And then going from Cold Veronica to RE4, yeah, there wasn't a lot of connection going on there, as we can tell, which was uh, a bloody nightmare. And then RE5 came and was like, nope, we're making that big connection to the previous games. And then RE6 came out and sort of did its own thing again. It brought characters back, obviously, but it didn't really continue off from any storylines that were sort of set up. And it did its sort of it did its sort of its own thing. And it was like it was supposed to set up, I guess, more things to come in the storyline, but it didn't do a good enough job of that i mean uh, what happened to the family no one knows they just disappeared okay so yeah um yeah uh and jake what happened to jake he's, he's gone he's never coming back again okay so yeah you get you get the uh you get the point of what, what of what you mean to say that it's the most interconnected titles because re7 to re8 is you know it is straight up act one and act two and it makes sense for re9 to be the act three of that particular uh, storyline set up since RE7. Um, the whole, uh, what is it, 
planned to close. Again, yeah, it makes sense for it to be planned to close to be developed one another. Again, RE8 went into development eight six months before RE7 even came out. And uh, thanks to the production leak, we know that there's an RE game called Apocalypse. And, it, you know, it's all pointing to that being RE9. And then, of course, elements introduced in RE7 will make much more sense after RE8. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming... I'm assuming the connections are going to be the big thing. And that leads me now to talk about where the story for RE9 is going to go, what characters are going to come back, uh, what the potential storyline and connections are going to be, and where, you know, how Resident Evil 9 is most likely going to end. Okay. So first up, uh, first of all, and this is very important, you, I would suggest you guys go up and find and read the uh, Baker Incident Report which is sort of like an epilogue set between RE7 and RE8. And it makes a lot of sense because there's clearly a lot of setup in that report, uh, which uh, is going to probably have massive repercussions for the series going forward, or at least for RE9 uh, particularly. Um, I'm going to try and dig this out and read some of it for you guys. Uh, just the main points, if I can find it. Um, so the Baker report is... is as you guessed it, it, it talks about uh, the incident that happened in RE7, and it's actually at the very end, uh, and there are a lot of hints as you're reading the report, it is written by Zoe Baker. The report is written by her. She's a survivor. Joe Baker is not mentioned, which is very confusing, uh, but um, it is mentioned, everything else in the events of the game were mentioned, how a family are all dead, and how the BSAA pretty much covered it up. To make it look like it was some sort of gas accident and you've got a lot of reports in there how uh, you know you've got like scientists talking about how it's impossible for that to have been the case because you know the the, the area where the bakers live have no reports of volcanic activity etc etc you find out that the bsa were originally sent in to stop evelyn to capture her uh, to stop the connections but they failed which resulted in uh, them transporting evelyn uh, via ship uh, to through to or through america from europe apparently which ended up with the events of RE7 happening. And uh, the BSA knew, they knew about the Baker situation, they quarantined the area off, uh, and they took their sweet time going in to stop it. Um, and ever since then, they've tried to be hush-hush. And with uh, Resident Evil 8, they're now using bioweapon soldiers, apparently. And Chris, you know, he broke off. He went rogue in order to find and kill Miranda. And now he finds about this, and it's become a big situation now. And uh, when you finish RE8... It ends with him, at least that first epilogue, if you will, that first ending ends with him pretty much saying we're going to, we, you know, we're going to the BSA uh, headquarters branch in Europe to sort this mess out. And after that, we don't know what happened. Uh, the the epilogue that we get with Rosemary at the end of the game hints that it, there's been a time skip. Chris is obviously still alive. Um, she's obviously being raised or working with Chris in some capacity. Uh, she's got abilities. We don't know what's really happening there. But uh, one of the most interesting things about the incident report is that it dwells more into the connections. It does reveal that they were specifically looking for Mia and Ethan after the events of RE7. Uh, it's also revealed that Ethan has no idea about Mia's criminal past with uh, the connections. And the BSA do know and they covered it up. They didn't tell it to him. So yeah, that's going to be a big thing. Uh, but the biggest, biggest thing is the revelation of who actually created the connections and who its leader is uh if i can find that i will mention that to you guys in a second um so first of all this is actually a bit of information uh, to take in uh evelyn was originally created in a munich research facility by the international crime syndicate the connections bsaa dispatched the team to destroy evelyn the mission however uh, was a failure and Evelyn escaped. Evelyn was then transferred to by the connections via ship, uh, blah, 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 etc. Et so we, we know all that, all that crap, essentially. Um, here we go, the Connections Report. The Connections is a crime syndicate with no base of operations. The organizational structure is unknown. However, we are aware of their actions on a global level. In recent years, they have been particularly active in Eastern Europe. So Eastern Europe, most likely RE9 will take place in Eastern Europe uh, uh, at wherever the connections are set up, their main HQ perhaps. Most of their activities appear to re revolve around the creation and selling of bioweapons, evidence was one of their products. Reliable sources have confirmed that the criminal organization was founded by Brandon Bailey. So who's Brandon Bailey? Oh my god, I don't know who this character is. Is this someone important? Yes, this is someone important. Uh, as it's mentioned here, Bailey is a screwed man and was once the right-hand man of Oswald E. Spencer, CEO and president of the Umbrella Corporation. Uh, his current status and location are known. 
Bailey and Spencer became estranged estra due to the firing visions, and Bailey used the connections he made working as the director of the Umbrella African Research Center to branch off and found the crime syndicate. The organization's main goal appears to simply be commercial gain. Further investigations are in progress. So yeah, right there, we have a potential link to what RE9 is going to do, or at least a potential link to who the main villain of RE9 is going to be, and that is that it's going to be the connections. The connections were set up at the very end of the, or throughout the uh, DLC, uh, Not a Hero, at the, which is technically the third final true end ending act of Resident Evil 7, and then they're sort of just barely mentioned in RE8 as the organization that went to Miranda and asked her to give them DNA samples of, Eve of Eva, technically, and uh, the mutamycine, which they used to create Evelyn and Frost that led to the entire incident in RE7. And since then, they've sort of, they just basically sort of disappeared. But considering how they were pretty much mentioned at the end of RE8, one is to assume that they're going to be the main villains going forward into RE9. And then, of course, we got our main villain here, Brandon Bailey, who used to work at the African branch. And he used to be Dr. Marcus's uh, student, I believe. And yeah, yeah, he's he, he's clearly a big sort of character. If you played RE5, you would find all of this information regarding him, and you would know about his backstory and who he is. And yeah, he he was a he was a he was he loved Doctor Marcus. He was a student of him, and he pretty much became very sad and disinterested when he died. And after that, we don't know what really happened to him. Uh, we're assuming that uh, uh, Spencer maybe assassinated him. Um, uh, I think it even mentions that he was eliminated with the intent of keeping any information regarding the Umbrella African Research Center hidden. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it also mentions that after Marcus's death, he became cold and emotionless. But no, apparently Ari, or the incident report, reveals that he survived, in fact. So he is alive. Bailey is alive, and he is the head of the connection. So we got our main villain and main organization threat for RE9 right there. They are after. They were after me and Ethan, but now most likely they're going to be after Rose and Mia. And uh, point number two, point number three is Chris and the whole situation regarding the BSA during the game. Apparently, when you're using your first aid, when you're playing as Chris, you can see that it's got the uh, blue umbrella logo in it. So he's clearly using items or weapons belonging to blue, blue umbrella. So he's clearly getting support from them somehow, unless he stole all the stuff for himself. But he's clearly not on good terms with BSA. They're clearly using or trying to use bioweapon soldiers, which kind of makes sense. You know, if it, it, the way the future is going now, it's like, let's use bio. That was the whole gist, wasn't it, about uh, from bioweapons, you know, to use, to create bioset weapon soldiers to for them to do the work. Um, but that's obviously going to be a no-go. <laughs> In the incident report, it's also mentioned that Zoe manages to get in contact with Mia, who sends her a letter explaining the situation, how she's, how her and Ethan have a daughter now, and how she hopes to reunite with Zoe one day for all the help that she gave and all the suffering, all the misery, and to try and make up for that. Uh, so that makes me believe that if we do get RE9, we're gonna have we're gonna have a strong focus on Rosemary as the main character. And also, I don't know if you guys realize this, but this um, RE7 and RE8 in particular feel very much like Silent Hill 1 and 2. Um, Resident Evil 7 is basically Silent Hill 2 with the husband uh, looking for his missing wife. Uh, and uh, Resident Evil 8 is basically Silent Hill 1 with the father looking for his missing child. Uh, with that in mind, and with the way Resident Evil 8 ends, I'm assuming that, yeah, uh, rightfully so, that RE9 would have you be playing as Rosemary, especially since... RE8 ends with the tagline that uh, the father's story is now do over or done, etc, etc. So it makes sense that the next character you're going to be playing as is Rosemary. And most likely we're going to be getting some sort of abilities that you get to unlock throughout the game because she's obviously got certain powers. I don't know how that's going to work. I don't know how good it's going to be, especially uh, playing as a powered character. I mean, the only powered characters we've ever played in the series were Wesker in Umbrella Chronicles. Uh, and that was mostly a rail shooter. The only kind of power abilities you ever got was him just sort of jumping from wall to wall and, you, uh, and using a pistol to attack uh, and fight enemies off. And of course, Jake in RE6 with the hand-to-hand. -hand. And maybe uh, Natalia was slowly getting infected uh, by Alex's mind uh, because she could see through walls and notice enemies. So I guess those were the only sort of characters you could play with abilities. So it's going to be interesting to see what Rosemary's abilities are. 
so yeah, I do think Rose is definitely going to be the main character of Ori Knight going forward. I definitely think it's going to have sort of an Silent Hill 3 element to it in that uh, maybe Mia gets kidnapped or she gets killed by the connections and, and Rose either has to go and rescue her mother or get revenge. We got Rose, Mia potentially being killed or kidnapped. I'm assuming maybe she gets kidnapped. I don't, I don't know. I mean... What more can you do with her character? Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, she was a big thing in RE7, and in RE8, she was sort of sidelined. So, for her to get kidnapped again would sort of be very repetitive. But then for her to get killed again, and this time for real, would be repetitive as well. So, you know, they, they have to come up with something uh, uh, for why Mia would be included. Um, Chris most likely is going to be coming back, and he's going to be the main thing that's. He's probably going to be uh, Rosemary's uh, mentor and guide. Um. Zoe might come back to sort of have that so we can get that reunion between her and Mia and maybe Zoe will run into Rosemary and she gets to tell her about her dad and Ethan, Ethan most likely will come back. How will Ethan come back when he, spoiler alert, he dies at the end of RE8? Um, RE8 reveals that the mutimice, the virus that Miranda uses, when she touched it, it had the memories of a lot of dead people in it that died in that area, in that village. And she hoped to basically use Rose in to revive or to bring her daughter's, Eva's, Eva's consciousness into Rosemary's. And I don't know if that worked or succeeded, uh, but uh, the, way, the way Rose acts at the end of the game, the way she clearly loves her dad very much, I get the feeling, and you have to keep in mind as well, Ethan was basically fully mauled with a human consciousness, basically, throughout uh, Resident Evil 7 and 8. And Rosemary is basically half human and half mauled, essentially, then, in that case. And when the mutimycin was destroyed, Ethan, dis or, or was getting destroyed, he was disintegrating. So when he, when he, you know, when he destroyed that, he would have killed himself, too. Uh, but obviously, Rose survives because she's got that half human DNA in her. But that also means she's the last remnant or survivor of anything related to the mold. So it would make sense why people would be after her and why Chris and the others would be trying to protect her or assassinate her in case she goes too big with her powers or loses control. But Ethan being back would make sense because also apparently he appears in the very last shot of the game. Like there's a guy that you see in the distance and apparently if you use photo mode or some sort of a, a mod to, to zoom in, you see that it's Ethan's model. He's he's got the he's got the same disfigured hand that he had at the end of RE8. Uh, the, the the fingers missing in that and the the bite mark. So apparently it is Ethan that you see at the very end. Uh, and the only logical conclusion I can come to is is that Rosemary is interacting with her dad via her mind, sort of like a psychic plague. So his body is dead, but his consciousness his consciousness lives on in her body in her mind. And I could see that being a big thing going into RE9, where maybe we get these little hallucination moments where Ethan sort of acts as the angel on Mia's shoulder. Uh, sorry, Rosemary's shoulder, helping her and guiding her. And then maybe at the very end of the game, something happens and he finally says goodbye and we get to see his face, maybe, because that would be a very powerful emotional moment. But if that's going to be a thing, and remember, this is just uh, a theory at the moment. If this is going to be a thing... Maybe there's going to be uh, Evelyn, because if, if if Ethan does end up being an RE9, sort of this uh, ghostly figure, then surely Miranda or Evelyn or Eva or whatever would be alive too, and would be sort of like the devil on Rosemary's shoulder on the other side. And maybe that's how we get sort of a, another case of choice-based system. That would be great, because RE hasn't done that in years. The last time was RE7, and the choice system in that was, was dumb. Like, it was pointless. It didn't really do anything uh blind blowing um so it'll be great to see that come back of course that brings up another thing uh because apparently there were rumors that said that there would be two returning characters only in re9 but i don't know if that was a mistranslation i don't even know if dusk himself said this i don't know if someone else said this i don't know if that was just a rumor being said but it doesn't make sense for re9 to just have two returning characters if anything i get the impression it meant that we would be we would play as two returning characters and there would be other returning characters too. So I do think Rose is definitely going to be the main character of RE9 going forward. Chris is definitely going to be the other playable character as well. Unless he's gotten really old in that. Because depending on when this takes place. Depending on if, if what we have at the end of RE8 is a time skip. And it's not just uh, you know Rosemary having grown up very fast in a certain amount of time. Then um, 
Chris would be too old at this point. He would properly be some sort of commander or mentor by radio that you talk to and interact with. So I can't see him being the guy that gets in on the action. Again, unless the game takes place just a few good years after RE8, in which case he would probably still be physically able to help out. Otherwise, if this is gonna if this takes place like 10, 15, 18 years later, I don't see that happening. I see Chris being either retired or just sort of being in the background, like like I said, on the radio and that dealing with commands. Um, so yeah, I do see that sort of happening, seeing those two kept coming back. That obviously Leo is going to come back. And like I said, I've already given my reasons for why I think Ethan is going to come back and why the connections are going to be a big thing going into this game. Uh, the next uh, thing to consider, of course, is the fact that this is supposed to be the last numbered title. Now, personally, yeah, I, uh, I can see that happening. Like, because the, the, the series has gotten to the point where it's very convoluted and there's a lot of characters we haven't seen in years now. We don't know what Jill is up to. It's been years since we've last heard what she's doing in present time. The last time we ever got anything was RE Re uh, Revelations 2 and that she's still recovering after her experiences in RE5 and after that nothing. It all went quiet. Since then, we don't know what she's been doing. She's probably retired now at this point because if, if, that was, if her PTSD was such an issue that she was still resolving that at the time of Revelations 2, one is to assume perhaps then that she's not in the field anymore. But it's kind of sad because Jill was, technically speaking, the secondary uh, main character of the series, uh, the, the first main heroine. So, you know, I want to see her come back. I want to see her come back. And yeah, definitely make it happen like Capcom. Come on. Um, do I see any other characters coming back in RA9 though, besides Chris from the original cast of characters? We are, well, this is interesting. Ada was originally planned for RE8, but she got scrapped from the game. So maybe they'll end up reusing her for RE9. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. But I'm very curious what direction RE9 or RE Apocalypse is going to go into. It, we also have to take consider what uh, Outrage and what characters are going to come back in that. Because apparently we're getting three, three returning characters in Outrage. One of them being Rebecca Chambers. The other two, I don't know. I don't know who the returning characters for that could be. Uh, you know, rumors are that it's going to be Claire and Jill because if it's the if it's the team that made Revelations two, apparently they said in an interview uh, long ago when Revelations two came out that if they did a third game, they would have Rebecca, Jill, and Claire as the main characters. But well, again, we'll have to wait and see what's going on with that, and then that will kind of give us an idea of what characters to expect maybe for R nine going forward. But since since Dusk and Souls mentions is going to be very connected together, and that as a trilogy. I'm assuming the big focus is just going to be on Rose and Chris and maybe Ethan as this sort of voice or ghost in her head. Uh, that's that's my theory anyway. Um, and really, that's all I can really think of. Um, in terms of locations, like I said, probably Eastern Europe. We're probably going to go Eastern Europe because that's that's what the incident file mentioned. That's where it was located. Where The whole village aspect of the game was, was great in my opinion. So I would love to be able to go and explore a new area similar to that. Maybe an island area. That would be kind of cool. Um, We'll have to again, we'll have to wait and see. We've got a good few years to wait before we find out what RE9 is going to be about. Which brings me to uh, another thing that I want to talk about, which is um, the potential for an RE10. What was I talking about? Oh, yes, RE10. The potential for an RE10. So, yes, um,. I don't like the idea of RE9 sort of being the end of the series. I mean, I get that it would be the end of this storyline for the Winters that they set up in RE7, but for it to be the end of everything that's come before for the series? No, I don't like that. I like the idea that RE10 would sort of serve to be the end of everything that's happened in the series thus far, and then ending it in a way that we get these standalone games going forward. So yeah, I like the idea for RE10 to basically be like um, a celebration of all the trilogies that have come before. So do what RE6 did, but better. Much more better. Three campaigns, and each campaign being a celebration of all the different trilogies. So campaign number one would be survival horror with the camera angles, similar to RE1 to RE3. Campaign number two would be RE4 to RE6 with the over-the-shoulder view and the action elements included into it. And then uh, campaign three would basically be RE7 to, I'm assuming, RE9 with the first person view. And obviously the more supernatural or hallucination element of the series going into that. Um, that, I think, would be kind of cool if they made a game like that, similar to that. 
and basically just managed to do what RE6 didn't do. Uh, would that be long? Would that be difficult? Yeah, it would be long. You're essentially making three different campaigns. Uh, you're making three different games, but uh, each campaign wouldn't be this very overlong thing. It would probably be similar to what we got with, uh, I'd say, RE2 or RE3 Remake, you know, very specific campaign that you can play through and then you get to you go over to the next one and i think that would work great i think that would work great you know you pick you pick the specific characters that you want in those campaigns and then you just write a, an overreaching story that relates to all three and then connects it and brings it all together by the end and then boom that's it you close off any loose ends that you have since re1 to re9 and goodbye you know you end it boom that's it all the characters that haven't seen the light of day come back and get you know, their moments to shine, either as supporting characters or playable main characters or in the background, and that's it. Like, I would like to see something like that done, but um, that's just wishful thinking on my part. Uh, as a whole, we don't know if that's even going to happen, because uh, if you, again, if you read the schedule, you know that the game that's supposed to come out after Apocalypse is supposedly called Ari Hank, but Dusk Golem says that that game got scrapped. But the whole idea that, uh, as it says here, that they want to abandon the number of titles and make more self-contained stories makes kind of sense to do that. So sort of like making games based on each character. So imagine if, if they were gonna if they were planning to make a Hank game, I'm assuming they probably got ideas to make Resident Evil Jake or Resident Evil Jill, Resident Evil Claire. Like this, there's there's a lot of potential for oh, for making games based or set for many different characters. So that could work, but at the same time, it might feel a bit lame. But again, remains to be seen. Remains to be seen. The series has gone through numerous changes and is basically one of those franchises that can do multiple things at once, essentially. So anything can go and fans will like it for the most part. You know, the hardcore ones will probably complain like they always do. You know, it's not survival horror. Oh, it's not RE4. Oh, it's first person. I don't like that. Oh, it's like Devil May Cry. You know, series franchises need to evolve and change. But as long as it's good change and not drastic change, but um, it depends. It depends, really. Anyway, those are my views and thoughts on what direction RE9 will likely go into. And yeah, I can't wait to hear about it in, in the next three years. I hope you guys like that. As always, like and subscribe. And I shall see you when I shall see you. Take care and bye.